In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to solve a circular motion roller coaster problem. So in this scenario, we're going to solve two different types of problems within this one um, problem that we see in front of us. We have a 200 kilogram roller coaster cart that goes around a loop that has a radius of five meters and it goes around in four seconds. What is the normal force at the top of the roller coaster and what is the normal force at the bottom of the roller coaster? So a couple main ideas you want to have in your mind before you start to approach the problem solving portion of this. And the first one is knowing when to make forces positive or negative. So when dealing with a circular motion problem, an object has inertia and it wants to continue in a straight line, but there's a force that is pushing or pulling it towards the center of the circle, the centripetal force causing it to turn and go around in a circle. So anything that's pushing or pulling towards the center of the circle would be known as a centripetal force that is pointed in the radial inward direction and that would be considered positive. And anything pointing away from the center of the circle which would be considered centrifugal or radial outwards, those would be considered negative. So typically with force problems, you would maybe say everything up is positive and everything down is negative. So when dealing with the circular motion problem, you wanna make sure you're identifying everything towards the center of the circle as positive and anything away from the center of the circle as negative. So let's take a look at the first part of our problem. And it's asking about the normal force at the top of the roller coaster. So right now we're gonna focus on that. And if we draw our force diagram, we are going to have the force of gravity pulling straight down as usual. And the other force that would be acting on the person is the force from the seat, which is also pointed downwards because the seat is pushing perpendicular against the person and since they're upside down is pushing in the downward direction, which means both of these forces are in the positive direction. So when we set up our problem and we have the sum of all of our forces or our net force, that is equal to mass times acceleration. And what we're gonna do is we're going to sub out some of these general parts of the formula with specific parts and things that fit with our circular motion problem. And then we're gonna go ahead and start plugging in numbers to solve. So I summed up the forces that we had in our diagram here. And remember, um, an Fn pointed downwards would maybe be considered negative in a lot of cases, but not a circular motion problem because it's pointing towards the center of the circle. It is a centripetal radial inward force, therefore it's positive. So we have Fn plus Fg equals M. And instead of A, I subbed out the A for V squared over R, which is the centripetal acceleration. So based on what I have here, um, if I plug in some values, I am looking for the normal force, so I do not have that. I'm just gonna go ahead and put Fn. And then for Fg, we know that is Mg, mass times 9.8. So we know the roller coaster is 200 kilograms. Multiply that by 9.8 equals M times V squared over R. We're gonna place that same mass over here, the 200 kilograms and that we want a V squared over R. So going through the problem, we do have our radius of five meters on the bottom here, but we do not have a velocity. So in cases like this, what you would do is you would find the velocity by doing 
2 pi r over t. And then 2 pi r, 2 times pi times the radius is the circumference of the circle. So it's basically the distance. And then capital T is the period, the amount of time it takes to complete that circle. So it's basically the circular motion version of a distance over time. So we can go ahead and use some of the information we have, which is the five meter radius, and then the four seconds for the period, solve for our velocity, and then go ahead and plug that into our formula. All right, so I went ahead and I plugged in that radius of four right over here. And then I plugged in the period of four seconds on the bottom. So I did two pi times that radius of five meters and then divided that by the period of four seconds and I got about 7.85 meters per second. Went ahead and plugged that into my formula over here. And then we basically had everything except our FN, which is what we were looking for. So I squared the 7.85 divided by five and then took that entire number and then multiplied by 200. I got 3,081.13. And then on the other side, we have FN plus our force of gravity, which is mg mass times 9.8, which came out to 1,960. I went ahead and subtracted that from both sides and I got my Fn of 1,121.13 Newtons. Okay, now for the bottom of the roller coaster, uh, we actually did a lot of the work that we need to to solve for the second part of the problem. The big difference for the bottom is that we have our Fg down as usual. And then when the person is sitting here, now the seat is pushing upwards perpendicular against the person. So the big difference is our Fn is centripetal pointed towards the center of the circle. And then our Fg is now facing away from the center of the circle. So it's going to be considered a negative force. So the only difference solving for the second part of the problem is this Fg is going to be negative which is of course gonna change our final solution, but we already did some work solving for our velocity and setting it up. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up with a negative Fg and then solve for our second normal force. All right, so we found our normal force for the bottom of the roller coaster and it came out to 5,041.13 Newtons. So that is much, much larger than our original normal force. So um, in this case, we have our FG and our FN working together to provide that centripetal force, that force towards the center of the circle to make the people and the cart spin around in the circle. But then at the bottom, the FN has to counteract this FG and provide an additional force upwards to have a net force in the centripetal direction. Therefore, that FN has to be much larger to push that person in that roller coaster cart um, towards the center of the circle to keep it going. Um, so it comes out to a much larger value, which is normal. So um, to recap, um, like I said over here, one of the most important details is what is positive and what is negative. And the roller coaster problem can be a little tricky because of the changes in what's positive and what's negative from the top of the roller coaster 
and then to the bottom of the roller coaster. From there, we basically use Newton's second law, summing up the forces equal to m times a, but we're going to sub out the a for v squared over r because that's the centripetal acceleration formula. And then in a lot of cases, we will use this 2 pi r over t to solve the velocity if we aren't given it directly. So we just went ahead and plugged in all the values we had, worked out the algebra, and then found our two normal forces. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and solve a roller coaster problem. Thank you for watching and listening.